So this is the other article that we've been talking about uh, when it comes to the data analysis, especially on the Brexit party, ensuring where their weak spot is. So, the Brexit party weak spot, data analysis shows where Farage underperformed. Noise trumps sound. Since the Brexit party topped the polls at the European elections, Nigel Farage has drowned out every other voice uh, as he fills the air with, air with ever-yielding airwaves. Challenged by a television interviewer on the larger combined vote share secured by hard Remain parties, he simply shouted her down. Little wonder then... Oh. God damn it, advert. Uh, little wonder then that few people realise his party actually underperformed compared to uh, pre-election polls, while Greens and Lib Dems did better than predicted. While the Brexit Party's performance made progress on UKIP's efforts in 2014, uh, critical analysis has been, uh, has been pushed to one side. It would be safe to assume that the Brexit Party performed best in the most pro-Brexit areas, but that depends on what we mean by best. Most coverage has centred on how many seats Farage won and what his share of the vote was, but there's another metric which is very revealing and never asked. How did Farage perform at, compared to the Leave vote in 2016? How effectively is he able to harness the support of those who backed Brexit three years ago? I've measured this by looking at the gap between the 2016 Leave vote in each council area and the uh, corresponding local 2019 Brexit Party vote share. Doing so reveals there are certain types of air was a certain types of area where Farage's party did particularly well, and certain types of areas where it didn't perform uh, particularly bad, particularly ba very badly. And it's not based on whether the places voted Leave or Remain. The following table, and I'll leave uh, again. I'll leave this um, link to this down below. <coughs> the following table shows uh, the 25 areas in England and Wales. Scotland has its own very distinct political dynamics, where the Brexit Party performed relatively worse in the European elections. The areas where it performed, uh, the area where its 2019 vote share was furthest behind the 2016 Leave vote. Two things are immediately obvious. There's the balance of leave voting and remain voting areas, and virtually all these areas are pri primarily urban, often with relatively high levels of local poverty. Greater London and the North West dominate together with the ethnically diverse towns and centres in cities in the Midlands. Some areas, like Ealing and Manchester, are very remainy, Others, like Oldham and Highburn, ep epitomise the working class Leave voters. London boroughs are relatively high Leave voters for the uh, capital feature prominently. Newark, Barking, Hunslow, Hun uh, Huntingdon uh, take, uh, taken together. These are 25 areas that overwhelmingly return Labour MPs to Parliament. There are 25 areas where the strongest relative Brexit uh, party performances are. And every single one of these areas is in the southern England. Uh, three are heavily Remain voting boroughs of London. The others are strewn across the South East and South West and East Anglia. Many of these fairly prosperous. Altersford is in the uh, Southland Walden and end of Essex, a very white and generally, uh, generally vote Tory, albeit with the pockets of historic Lib Dem strength. These areas are balanced in a mix of leave and remain leaning areas. Throughout the only uh, uh, Tolbury and Tolbridge and the Swale recorded leave votes are above are around 60%. These are almost a combination of lefty, um, of leafy commuter suburbs, market towns and semi-rural districts. The Bre Brexit Party's performance revealed to the local leave vote is therefore not at all dependent on the size of the Leave vote. Instead, there are clear distinctions based on geography, class, ethnicity and urban density. Which leaves the question, why? 
The simplest explanation is variable turnout. European elections have far lower turnouts than general elections or referendums. Working class voters are much less likely than middle class voters to turn out for the European elections. And the Brexit party uh, lacked the ground game to canvas and get its vote out on the day. Given that uh, white working class voters are more likely to, to back leave than remain, this might explain the relative depressed Brexit party votes in working class seats. By contrast, middle class leave voters in the, in the southern Tory shires turned out, pushing up the Brexit party's relative, relative success in southern England. But variable turnouts cut both ways. Working class voters are a lower turnout group but older voters are a higher turnout group, and Leave support is strong amid the old, uh, among the, uh, the old young voters in cities like Birmingham, London, Manchester and Leicester, are statistically likelier to vote Remain, but unlikelier to have voted at all on the May 23rd. On the May 23rd. Why hasn't their absence boosted the Brexit party's vote share in these cities? Moreover, the average swing from UKIP to the Brexit party was a similar in both, uh, both seats of 25 areas. While Farage votes tallies most appearing combined with the 2014 UKIP vote, with defections from local conservatives in some areas, such as Burnley and Pendle, there's a clear shift of Labour voters towards Farage as well. But, there is an but this is the exception, not the norm. It is often forgotten that Farage himself is an unpopular politician. More people dislike him than support him. His appeal has limits, ethnic minority voters being a likely example. But, but, they, but they leave voters, uh, but be they leave voters or, or not. And doesn't really connect with the uh, working class voters the way middle class journalists assume. It is too early to know for sure what is driving this. It's most certainly not because working class uh, leave, leave, leavers are suddenly flocking to remain. But there is an alternative explanation that is worth considering. While many middle class conservative Brexiteers have been Eurosceptic for decades, the working class leave voters were in at least part a protest vote against the established order. Many did not vote in the 2014 European elections but turned out in the referendum motivated by what was marketed as a campaign for change. These are the urban working class leave voters. Uh, are these urban working class leave voters now giving up on electoral politics, alienated by three years of indecision and incompetence together with total paralysis in other key policy areas? If so, what happens then? And that's a very uh, valid question. Uh, what does happen then? Um, do we get a lower turnout at the next general election? We don't know. Like I say, this is all statistics, and I think that uh, trying to analyse all this, uh, bring all this information together, I think is very interesting. But, as is worth calling out at the start of that article, as it pointed out, the Brexit party underperformed. So it, that is worth uh, pointing out. And as we've said before, uh, this week on this channel, you had two MPs who Brexiteers claimed would be thrown out because they were Remainers. Turned out not to be true. Even with the Brexit party in play, which they then lost, it shows that people will care about local issues more and as I said last video all you need to do is put in how Brexit is going to damage your locality and how it is going to be worse off for you locally and all of a sudden you could potentially have a bigger swing and convince people to go hmm baby Brexit isn't such a good idea after all but already we know this feeling is rising and you wonder why they don't want a second referendum. 